Hello everyone, welcome to this session on how to learn DevOps the right way. Today in this session guys, I'll be telling you guys, should you learn DevOps or not? And if you want to learn it, how should you go about it? What should you learn first? What all things you should be learning? So on and so forth. Now before I start on with the video guys, I request you all to click on that subscribe button if you're already not subscribed because we do like YouTube live videos on every few days and Thursdays with different technologies every time for you. Right? We also ex uh, try to upload as many tutorials as we can so that the learning is at its peak on this Intelibar channel. So do subscribe to our channel if you are already not subscribed and do click on that notification button as well if you want to receive any notification for us whenever we upload any video. Now moving on to the video guys, now let's start on with the agenda of this session. So we are going to start off with why do you need to become a DevOps engineer? Right? What is the need? Is there any future for a DevOps engineer? That all we are going to discuss and why DevOps engineer. And then we are going to move on and understand what is the DevOps engineer role exactly. Right? Once you are done with that, we will move on and talk about how do you become a DevOps engineer. So once you have understood, okay, so there is demand and once you understand what is the DevOps engineer exactly, I will tell you guys how to become a DevOps engineer, what all things you have to learn, what all things you have to make sure that you do. And towards the end, I'll also start off with how to get started. So once I've listed down all the things that you have to do, I'll probably give you a plan as to how you should go about executing it. So let's start the journey guys. Let's start off with the first topic, which is why should you become a DevOps engineer? Now let's look at some facts guys, right? So according to Glassdoor, the average salary of a DevOps engineer is $100,000 in the US. Now this doesn't mean that you don't get salary above 100,000 but the average salary of a DevOps engineer is $100,000 in the US. According to payscale.com, a release manager who is basically nothing but a DevOps uh, manager you can say earns around 9,50,000 per annum on an average in India. right? According to Indeed, as of September 2019, that is our current month, there are 7,000 plus vacant DevOps engineering jobs that you can apply to. Okay, so this is the current scenario. This is the current scene in which you can get jobs for DevOps engineer. Moving forward, now let's talk about the average salary of DevOps engineer, what we have summarized from the previous facts. So in the US, the average salary is $100,000 an annum. That's what we just learned. In India, the average salary is 5,69,000 if we take into account freshers who are becoming DevOps engineers, even experienced top people like a release manager or a DevOps architect or a cloud DevOps architect, all of them, the average salary which you get is 5,69,000 an annum. And obviously, I have, I have friends who, have DevOps, who are DevOps engineers who are very senior. They must be around... Uh, when I say very senior, not in terms of the number of years of experience, but in terms of what all things they know. And they easily earn up to around 20, 000, 20 uh, lakhs per annum and even more than that. right? So if you talk about people who are 10 to 15 years experienced in the IT industry, they can easily get even up to 45 to 50 lakhs per annum. That is the upper limit that I'm telling you in India as a DevOps engineer. right? And in the UK, it's 62,500 pounds an annum. That's the average salary of DevOps engineer. Uh, moving forward, now let's talk about what is this DevOps engineer role. So we understood, okay, so there is, uh, uh, there, are, there are a lot of jobs out there and people are earning a lot. But what is this DevOps engineer role? What, what does it take to be, to be a DevOps engineer? So let's first understand what is the DevOps engineer role. So basically, a DevOps engineer is a person who manages uh, your application's life cycle in, uh, in your company. For example, let's say, you know, you have a set of developers who develop an application. Now, the journey of the code of that application from the developer system to the production system to the point you are able to access that application from your phone or your laptop or from an app is what DevOps is all about. Right? So there are a lot of things which happens in between uh, from reaching uh, the production system to, uh, and from the point where it's just been coded on the developer system. Right? So what happens is uh, when the developer develops code, uh, it has to be first tested. Right? So there are some automatic suits that we have that can basically test your code and once you test 
code uh, code testing is done right so th- this testing could be more of like uh, is your code readable is are the, are, are it's is it understandable enough so if this kind of testing is there this happens on the lower end when you push the code by the developer after that there are some functional tests which have to be done but before that uh, what happens is on before the production environment there's a staging environment and there's a testing environment where you basically deploy the application first to see how the application is basically functioning and the tests which have to be done on this they are basically automated right so basically the application is deployed over there with all the dependencies involved automatically right and then the application is tested automatically then it is staged and again further it is tested for any edge cases and finally if everything goes well it is deployed on to the production now this life cycle is planned by a devops engineer right and this life cycle is basically automated by a devops engineer so a devops engineer's job is to plan out like if i have 100 people in my tech company right how to get work done by 100 people on the same product right how to distribute them work how to plan out their activities so all these things are basically planned by a devops engineer and a devops engineer basically plays a key role in architecting how an application basically would be deployed uh, when it's on a certain uh, platform right moving forward guys now let's talk about the skills or the tasks basically which a devops engineer does right so uh, a devops engineer is basically expected to be an excellent system administrator is expected to know how to uh, know about how to deploy applications he should know about virtualization he should have hands on experience in network and storage he should have an experience in coding right what, what that basically means is you should not be a hardcore developer and you should not be able to create mean stack or mon stack applications what that basically means is if you read some lines of code you should be able to understand uh what is happening in the code what is the logic behind that code right so that much proficiency is expected from a devops engineer apart from that soft skills are also a must because the devops engineer role is also sometimes a customer facing role wherein they are basically expected to ask the requirements of the customer and according to that they're expected to lay down a plan as to how things will be done right so they should be acquainted with most of the automation tools which will basically create the whole devops life cycle like i told you guys that devops life cycle requires automation automation is at the heart of the devops life cycle right so you have to be acquainted with a lot of automation tools if you are working with the devops life cycle after that you also have need to have software testing knowledge now the automatic tests that i was talking about they are basically created by software testers right and the implementation is basically done by the devops engineer but you should also understand how a software testing uh, suit is basically created right you should basically know how to create a test from scratch so that if you are deploying a test and if a problem occurs you should know exactly where the problem is happening right and finally he should also be acquainted with all the security best practices which goes into creating an architecture because obviously you are dealing with a product you are and if it's a product based company and if you're dealing with a product you are basically handling the heart and soul of the company which earns the company bread and butter right so the most important aspect of this is security so there should be no dos attacks on your application your application should not be like like the code that you're deploying it gets leaked out somewhere there should that should not be the case so you should be ready for all the edge cases and you should devise a full proof security architecture for your application too and this these are the kind of expectations that are basically basically that people have from a devops engineer now moving forward guys i talked about a lot of big things i talked about you knowing security architectures i talked about you knowing a lot of architectures you know i talked about you knowing automation tools i talked about you knowing in and out of being a system administrator now how do you get all these skills like if you are a person who is from an it background or from a non it background and you feel you know devops is a thing that i might be interested in switching on to how do you become a devops engineer okay so let's try to answer this question by first listing down all the skills that we have to learn first okay so we have basically taken up some jobs from different job portals and these are the skills that are expected from a devops engineer 
So this is a job from the Unilever company and these are the requirements that they expect from a DevOps engineer. So the DevOps engineer should be good in Python. He should be good with Ansible Chef or Puppet. That is either of these tools you should know. He should know Jenkins, he should know Java, he should know Docker, he should know Kubernetes and he should also know about operating system, virtual uh, machines, containers, proxy, Linux, etc. Right? Don't get scared with these terms guys, I'll give you a solution, I'm here to give you a solution but I'm just letting you know what all skills are required. Okay? Then what else are required by the option there? Yeah, you, uh, again, this is a job by, by the company SAP and they're hiring DevOps engineers and these are the things that they expect. Again, they need Kubernetes, containers, Nagios. Nagios is basically a monitoring tool. They need uh, cloud uh, providers like knowledge of GCP, Azure. Uh, they also need to need Chef or Ansible. Okay, so these are some skills. Let's look at one more job profile. Let's talk about a company called Oracle. So they expect uh, you to know cloud. You expect me to know CICD, Git, Docker of Kubernetes, Python, configuration management. So as you can see, most of them have the similar kind of skills which they are expecting in all the DevOps engineers job, right? So let's list down what all are the skills expected. So you should know the configuration management automation tools that we have listed over here. Then you should know the CI/CD tools, uh, basically the pipeline tools, Jenkins that we heard about. Then you should know testing tool for this you the most prevalent uh, framework which is used is Selenium. Then you should know cloud services like AWS, Azure, GCP. And then you should also know a programming language like Python. Okay. So these are the skills which are required by a DevOps engineer. And these, if you know, you're eligible to become a DevOps engineer. At the same time, you should also have strong uh, Linux skills. Okay. That is also a, an expectation from a DevOps engineer. And if you have these skills, you can become a DevOps engineer. Now, the next question this is how to get started. How do you get started when you probably know probably either half of it or three fourths of it or one fourth of it or zero of it? And if you want to become this guy who is a DevOps engineer, how do you go ahead and become one? Okay. Now there are two ways, guys. So either whatever skills I've told you, you can start off with these skills, right? So how do you start off? You start off by a programming language. Uh, let's take the example of Python. You learn all the loops, you learn all the if statements. Uh, so this will hardly take around, uh, if you are from a non-programming background, it should take around two to three days to get a hang of uh, how basically Python works with loops, if conditions, and uh, some, some uh, input output uh, operations. If you get acquainted with this, I think uh, you are good to go. So it'll take two, three days to get a hang of it. And then another week where you can practice some projects. You can go to websites like uh, CodeMonk. You can go to websites like Hacker Earth, where they have a lot of practice problems. You can go over there, try the beginner problems. And then I think that would be great enough. 10 days is good enough to invest on a programming language. And that's how you get started right so once you are done with the programming language uh, the next skill that you would have to know is about cloud right so there are three cloud services which will mostly be asked from you it will be aws will be azure and will be gcp okay so aws is a cloud provider which is the most uh, popular cloud provider among all the companies that you'll be applying to so it's a better choice to first learn aws and then start off with uh, Azure first and then GCP because this is how the popularity goes. And when you start off with AWS, most of the concepts that you'll be learning in AWS will be the same with Azure and GCP, right? So when you start off with AWS, there are a lot of uh, content online. You can go through a lot of documentation. You get, uh, uh, I mean, the first thing they'll have to do is you'll have to start by creating an account. You'll get a free tier for uh, one year that you can practice on. Right. Uh, so if you search on Google, if you research a bit, you get a lot of content that you'll have to go through. But yes, first you'll have to research a lot and then you'll have to jot down in which sequence you would want to learn AWS. But if you try to research, there are websites that will basically tell you what to learn first and what not to. Okay. Then you have to go ahead and learn about DevOps. Now, DevOps would include all these things, CI, CD, testing tools, automation tools, Right. So in this, uh, there are essentially, uh, if, we, if we were to talk about the 
DevOps lifecycle. This is how the DevOps lifecycle looks like, right? So first you have uh, create. So create basically means coding, right? So coding. Uh, so as a DevOps engineer, uh, from the code perspective, you have to know how to do versioning in code. So you'll have to learn Git. You'll have to learn about how to verify it, which is basically testing. You'll have to learn about Selenium. Then how to package it, basically building the file. For that, you'll have to learn Maven. How to release it. For that, you'll have to know about Jenkins because that integrates basically all the tools. And all the tools that I'm telling you guys, uh, just write it down and you can search on Google. You'll get a lot of content on them. But yeah, you'll have to research and you have to study on your own once at least. And then try on and understand first the concepts and then go ahead and then do the hands-on as well. Okay. Then after uh, release, you'll also have to learn some configuration management tools, uh, which is basically Puppet, Chef, and Ansible, right? Because these are the most uh, popular tools. Then for monitoring, you will have to learn uh, Nagios uh, because that was one tool which is asked. And there are some other monitoring tools as well. But from my experience, what I've seen is Nagios is the most uh, easy to learn tool. And you can start with that. And once you get a hang of all the concepts, you can actually go ahead and, uh, you know, try on some other monitoring tools too, right? In this, we missed out on Docker, which is a very important tool, but Docker is something that you can actually touch in the end as well because it's not related to all the tools that we just, just discussed, right? So learn about Docker, then start on with Kubernetes, which is uh, basically a tool to manage Docker containers well, right? So if you go in this sequence, I think it would be... Uh, a sweet ride for you will take around six to eight months uh, with your uh, hard uh, hard work and your dedication towards uh, learning those tools and uh, following them. And if you follow it thoroughly, uh, I think you would be equivalent to a six months experience DevOps engineer. Okay. Now, once you're done with the tools, obviously you'll have to go ahead and learn a lot of best practices. So if you are not a developer and if you're not a system admin, uh, you will have to learn how uh, architectures are basically deployed on production systems, right? And for that, you'll have to go through a lot of white papers. So you can actually refer AWS white papers, you can refer Azure white papers. And if you go through them, you will understand how the uh, architectures basically are in the production grade. And then you can start implementing the tools that you have learned on these production systems, right? With the help of those white papers. 